Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The purpose of today's video is to talk about Amir Kabir Mir Sayyid Ali Hamadani rahmatullahi ta'ala alayh, his great achievements in the field of dawah. And before talking about his success in this mission in the field of dawah, I just want to talk about his preparation of becoming such a great Dai. Because in order to become a successful Dai, one has to make a huge preparation. That preparation is related to one's self, one's soul. And Amir Kabir Mir Sayyidi Hamadani Rahmatullahi Ta'ala prepared himself fully for this field, for this mission. And that preparation started right from his childhood and it's mentioned in books that when he was a child means during his childhood he memorized the whole Quran means he became half is a Quran and he also became a religious scholar under the guidance of his maternal uncle means when he was a child during his childhood he has completed his Islamic education and also completed the hives of Quran. So that was his preparation as far as the field of knowledge is concerned. Then he sought the guidance of some spiritual saints and in this regard he became the disciple of one of the great saints of that time whose name is Sheikh Abu Barakat Taqyuddin Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayh and from here starts the spiritual journey of Amir Kabir Mir Sayyid Ali Hamadani Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayh under his guidance he went into seclusion for six years and it's mentioned in books that during these six years he did not utter a single word regarding the material life regarding the worldly life because these six years were considered as his great preparation for becoming a Dai for mastering his self as well as mastering his soul and after the death of Shaykh Taqyuddin Abu Barakat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayh he sought the guidance of another great saint whose name is Shaykh Sharfuddin Mahmud Muzdaqani Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayh who belonged to Kubraviya order means who belonged to Kubraviya Silsila he was a great saint of his time and under his orders he took a huge travel he took a travel of so many years he took a travel that consisted so many years that is he traveled for when next 20 years of his life and during that travel he performed Hajj thrice he met so many scholars and awliyas and he saw so many cultures so many nations thus he got great experience and as well as knowledge of secular as well as religious life this experience have him a lot in the field of dawah then he decided to visit Kashmir Valley his visiting of Kashmir Valley was neither an accidental one nor it was a usual kind of event an ordinary kind of event in fact this event was a great event and it was an idrial event it was not an accidental one as it is mentioned in certain books that he had some tiff with Amir Taimur of that time and when he had that tiff some quarrel with Amir Taimur and because of that quarrel he had no choice but to visit Kashmir this cannot be considered as complete truth it is mentioned in so many uh, books of his biography that once after that quarrel with Amir Taimur he was with a group of dervishes once he was sitting with a group of dervishes and he had a dream in his dream 
he saw Prophet peace be upon him sallallahu alayhi wasallam and Prophet peace be upon him ordered him to visit Kashmir Prophet peace be upon him also told him that although Islam has reached Kashmir Valley but it is not enough yet because those people there who have embraced Islam they have not been able to detach themselves from the non-Muslim traditions and practices and rituals and if you read books you would see that Kashmiri people who were Muslim at that time they used to offer prayers as well also used to pay homage to Brahmins to the saints of non-Muslims so that means non-Muslim practices were prevailing among Muslims and also there was a huge sect of people who were non-Muslims so that is why Prophet peace be upon him ordered him to visit Kashmir Valley in the orders of Prophet peace be upon him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Amir Kabir Mir Sayyid Ali Hamadani Rahmatullahi Ta'ala decided to visit Kashmir and it is mentioned in books that he visited Kashmir Valley thrice the first visit was on 774 Hijri the second visit of Amir Kabir Mir Sayyid Ali Hamadani was 781 Hijri and the third visit was on 785 Hijri but among these three visits the most important visit was the second visit and in this visit he brought to Kashmir Valley 700 Sadat those Sadat were religious scholars and also they were skillful artisans and also they were trained in secular form of education and it's mentioned in books that upon the hand of Amir Kabir Mir Sayyidi Hamadani Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayh 37,000 people embraced Islam because these Sadats, these Da'is, these trained Da'is they went into the nooks and corner every nook and corner of Kashmir Valley and spread Islam I want to mention one great feature of the Da'wah of Amir Kabir Mir Sayyidi Hamadani Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayh that his Da'wah was a comprehensive one it was a dynamic one and it had three main things three basic things which made his dawah supremely successful and as a dai every dai has to adopt or must adopt these three things if they have to become great dais of islam because it is seen in all the times among Sahabas, among Tabais, and among Awliya Allahs, their dawa was always comprehensive. It consisted of those things which I'm about to mention that made their dawa successful. The first thing in his dawa of deen is dawa towards Allah, dawatun in Allah. The second thing was Dawah ila Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the third thing was the upliftment of the people who embrace Islam. This is what a successful da Dawah can In this regard, Amir Kabir Mir Sayyidi Hamadani Rahmatullahi Ta'ala What he did first, he established a Dawah center and for that he chose a place in Zana Qadam where that Dawah center is located called Khanakahi Mu'alla and it's mentioned in books that establishment of Khanakahi Mu'alla the da as a Dawah center it was from the orders of Prophet peace be upon him it's mentioned that Prophet peace be upon him came in his dream and ordered him to 
establish a dawa center on the bank of river jelly and prophet peace be upon him also determined determined the boundaries of that particular dawa center which we see nowadays as khanqah muallah and when his dream ended amir kabir mir sadir hamadani woke up and went into the place and saw the boundaries of khanqah muallah were already drawn there were lines drawn as the boundaries of khanqah muallah the second important thing which he did in this regard that he established a comprehensive library in his homeland called khatlan there was a huge library of islamic as well as secular books he brought books from khatlan and established a huge library in khanqah muallah so that kashmiri people would benefit from that library the second most thing which i already told you that is dawa consisted to key features one is dawa ila allah and another is dawa ila rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam he brought two holy relics of prophet peace be upon him one was prophet's flag which he used in his various battlefields and another was a pillar of one of the tents of prophet peace be upon him so this was his attachment towards prophet peace be upon him he taught people of kashmir not only about tauhid not only about allah but also he gave them the discipline he but also he gave them the sense of discipline the sense of respect the sense of love towards prophet peace be upon him and this amalgamation that is da'wa ila allah and da'wa ila rasul can be easily seen in one of his great aurads that's aurad fatiha which is a gift for kashmiri people first of all i want to mention uh, something about aurad fatiha it is mentioned that once he traveled jerusalem that is he traveled to masjid al aqsa and he was worshiping there during his worship he saw prophet peace be upon him and it was prophet peace be upon him himself who bestowed aurad fatiha to amir kabir it is mentioned that prophet peace be upon him said to him in his dream that khud hadhihi al fatiha take this beginning or take this success and when he opened that book it was in the form of book when he opened that book he saw it was aurad e fatiha so we can say this aurad e fatiha is a gift of prophet peace be upon him through amir e kabir means sayyid ali hamadani to kashmiri people he gave this gift to kashmiri people and asked them to recite aurad e fatiha after fajr prayers because at that time there were so many temples and from those temples there were voices of their own religion which were prevailing in kashmir valley and he order kashmiri people that each and every person there should recite aurad e fatiha in a loud voice because he followed the orders of sunnah prophet peace be upon him it is mentioned in so many ahadees that prophet peace be upon him also used to recite so many kalimats so many duas after salah now i want to mention the earlier fact that this aurad e fatiha is also the amalgamation of the tauhid as well as the law of prophet peace be upon him because from one side if there are kalimats regarding allah regarding monotheism regarding tauhid and but from the other side there is also in the end a gift to kashmiri people that is salam and salat upon prophet peace be upon him and kashmiri people famously call it 
salam and this salam is prevalent in every mosque of Kashmiri people whenever they recite awrad or without awrad they recite this salam so this awrad fatiha is also an amalgamation of these two things that is dawa ila Allah or dawa ila Rasul so this is actually a lesson to all those da'is who want to go into the field of dawa or who are the da'is their job is not only to give dawa in Allah but their job is also to attach people towards to profit peace be upon him to tell people the importance of love of profit peace be upon him to tell people the stature of profit peace be upon him so these were the two key features of his dawa the third key feature of his dawa which make him supremely successful in the field of dawa is the upliftment of the local people is the upliftment of Kashmiri people and in this regard those 700 sadats which he brought here they were not only religious scholars among them were engineers among them were people who were extremely who were very very artful in so many handy works certain were engineers certain were artisans certain were experts in handicrafts and they popularized hair shawl making cloth weaving poultry paper mache calligraphy they also taught people various techniques in the field of agriculture thus with his whole efforts with his all of his efforts not only in the field of religion but also in the secular field it is mentioned in the books that he created a miniature Iran he created here a culture which was rich a culture which was abundant as far as the economic value is concerned social value is concerned but also a culture which was rich in Islamic values so those people were not only artisans not only religious scholars but they were artisans as well they were secular scholars as well so in this regard his dawa was comprehensive that made his dawa supremely successful among the people of Kashmir in the end I want to mention certain verses it is a, these verses are, are actually a great tribute made by Shari Mashrik Allama Iqbal Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayh I want to read those lines before you and translate them these lines goes like this Sayyidu Sadat Salari Ajam Daste U Mi'amari Taqdeer Umam Allah Iqbal calls him I will translate these lines Noble of Nobles Commander of Persia whose hand is the architect of nation Khutai Ra Shahe Darya Asteen Dad Ilmo Sannato Tahzibo Deen A King Ocean munificent to that will he gave science, crafts, education, religion. Afarid a mard iran e sagheer, ba hunar hai gharib o sagheer. That man created miniature Iran, which I mentioned. This term is used by Allama Iqbal Rahmatullahi Ta'ala. He says, Afarida a mard iran e sagheer. Iran e sagheer means miniature Iran. That man created miniature Iran with rare and heart ravishing arts. Yak nigahe u kushayat sadhira, khizotir rabadal rahi badeh. With one glance, he unravished hundred knots, rise and let his arrow transfix your heart. With these lines, I am ending this video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.